Hi everybody, I'm Krish Lewis and we just out at sea looking for some red tide. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen before the water getting this reddish orange tint on it and usually we assume that it's very bad and dangerous. So we collected a water sample here and it looks like nothing right now but we'll take it to the microscope to show you guys. So there are some dinoflagellates in here. Um, a week or so ago the red tide was more prolific, um, it was much more intense, you could actually see the water being this brown reddish colour but it's kind of died now, down now, more because A it rained and B the wind probably has spread them across the sea and so there are still some cells in here that we can physically see with our eyes but we'll take it to the microscope to show you guys and you guys can actually see the little horns that these little dinoflagellates have and how they actually move through the water. So dinoflagellates are these little organisms that got a thick like shell on them called the theci and they've got two little tails that help them move in the water. They are dinoflagellates that can photosynthesize but there are also very really big, big groups of them that can photosynthesize and consume other organisms in the water like algae or cyanobacteria or bacteria in the water column and generally what they do is um, when the water is quite still and there's lots of stratification and the water is also quite warm these dinoflagellates start reproducing um, splitting themselves um, and making daughter dinoflagellates and reproducing really fast in a short amount of time taking over large parts of the sea and the ocean they also have a part of their life cycle that can reproduce sexually and that's when they exchange genetic material or gametes and a lot of times those little babies of the dinoflagellates then settle in the bottom of the seafloor until the following season when upwelling or intense winds can bring them up and inject them back into the water column where then they will multiply and reproduce. Um, the reason why they reproduce so quickly is because there's either a lot of nutrients in the water, either from runoff or sewage being in the water, as well as natural uh, means. And they're really good for the ocean because they actually form part of the food chain. And so as long as there's enough animals to consume them, everything will stay in check. But when things get out of balance, the ocean starts getting too warm, there's a lot of nutrients and the wind keeps them concentrated in one spot, they can um, start dying off and consume a lot of oxygen. And that's when we get those crayfish walkouts that generally happen. Happen. and also a lot of the times they also poison um, filter feeders like mussels that people want to consume.